Well, hello everyone. It's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a new love reading today. So this is going to be off with the old and on with the new. I've been getting a lot of requests for new love readings. So here I am and I hope that you guys enjoy this one. So obviously just take what resonates for you and get rid of anything that doesn't. All the decks I'll be using here today will be listed down below as well as this beautiful organite, which is called the Genie in a Bottle created by my friend Michelle from Bell's Wing and Bell. So let's jump right into the messages. We're going to take a look Look and see what is the memory lane right now. So let's dip our feet into the past experiences in love for you. So what did the past experiences in your love life? You know, why did you go through what you went through? What does it look like? Etc. So this right here is called the Haunted Heart Oracle by Aqua Moonlight. So let's see what we need to know here. Let's take a trip down memory lane. What are some of your past experiences in love? Let's look at this. Let's see what wants to come through. <laughs> okay, we have the dark love, you guys. I'm just going to read the card and, and just look at what it says. This connection is not good for you. Bad luck. Mood swings and anger are a sign to cut this person out of your life ASAP. Take care of your own health and let them deal with their own BS. Ooh. <laughs> so this is telling me that somebody from your past basically was bad luck. No good for you. Maybe you guys continue to, you know, try and make something work or you know, just stay in a situation that maybe you just knew wasn't good for you. You were hoping for the best and it just didn't seem to get any better. If anything, it was kind of like dragging your vibration down, you know, causing you a lot of darkness. So let's go ahead and continue here. Let's see what else. The one who knows. Oh, okay. So this is talking about karma. So this says no, nothing can get past the laws of karma. Spirit is closely watching the situation. Anything unethically done is being recorded. Justice will be served one way or the other. Holy smokes, you guys. This tells me that you guys probably got really screwed over from somebody in your past and you're wondering whether or not this person is going to get their karma. And let me tell you, with that card coming through, it's reminding you that karma doesn't forget anyone's name. You might not have the luxury to see it or even hear about it, but just know that everybody gets basically, you know, what they deserve in the end. You know, they just do. So try not to worry too much about someone that did you dirty, did you wrong, getting away with it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get one more. We have the spilling secret. Oh my gosh. Eventually everyone's true colors will be revealed. Someone has been living a lie for far too long and their cover is about to blow. Who is this fraud and what have they been hiding? Oh my gosh, you guys. This is, of course, telling us here that someone was a fraud, somebody was a liar, maybe somebody was keeping a lot of secrets from you. Maybe you found out about these secrets after the fact. You know, I remember there was somebody from my past a very long time ago. I found so much crap out after, you know, um, we ended things and it was just such a blow. I was angry for so long. Um, and of course, you know, I, I didn't address the situation because I just didn't want to give any more power to it, but I always hoped and prayed that this person with, would get their karma. I have no idea if they ever did, but I just have to have that faith that, you know, everybody learns in their own way. So I'm just sharing that with you guys because karma, I don't think forgets a name. All right. So let's go ahead and go into this color of love oracle and see what else all right past looks pretty brutal past looks tough but let's see what else we need to know here we have don't rush. Okay. So what I'm getting here is that you may have met this person and you really rushed into it. So it says here, you know, somebody has been living a lie. And so someone was able to perhaps pull the wool over your eyes because maybe you went too quick, too fast. Maybe you felt a lot of energy with this person, like a lot of chemistry. And so you just kind of jumped right into it without thinking. Yeah. And sometimes that happens, you know, we're really attracted to people. We're really focused on the feelings that we're having and everything that's coming up. And sometimes I hate to say it, but it, it could be just a good old trauma response 
is what you're feeling. It's my, maybe not magic. It might just be drama. So that's just what I'm getting with that. Let's see what else. Uh, face your fears. Okay, so this particular situation brought up your biggest fears. Okay, this could also be the person that you're dealing with. They didn't face their shadow or their fears. So instead of being hurt by you or rejected by you, they may have sabotaged this connection first, kind of beating you to the punch. That might just be the way that this person rolls. I'm gonna have to move this candle because it is just not really bringing forth a lot of good light. So it's on the side, but I just had to get rid of it. Okay. So fear of rejection, hurt, or intimacy may be blocking you from attracting a happy, lasting relationship. If you can face these fears, you'll be in a better position to attract a partner. Now, this could be you. Maybe you had a lot of shadow, a lot of trauma. You have a lot of things that you were still working through when you met this person. So perhaps they have created some sort of a healing for you, triggered a lot of these things within you so you could take a look at it and heal these things before you move forward to attract a different type of partner. Maybe you were attracting this person out of a lower vibration. So it's kind of like, you know, like attracts like type, type of situation. But I'm also getting that this individual, they fear intimacy. So what they do is they're constantly sabotaging relationships. So this individual really doesn't have long, happy, lasting relationships. They can't really attract that because they're not in a good connection or relationship with themselves. And so they're never really going to be able to have that mirrored back to them, unfortunately, or they're just never going to be able to show up in that way for someone else. So let's go ahead and get one more. And we have taken advantage of, hmm. It says, don't let your attraction for someone lead you to be taken advantage of financially or otherwise. Be aware of scammers and opportunists. So some of you guys absolutely could have been dealing with a total scammer, somebody who pretended to be somebody that they were not, somebody that presented themselves as a certain, you know, like partner to you, and then they just ended up being the absolute opposite. So, you know, we all have an opportunity to learn a thing or two. I mean, sometimes, yes, it's just like you, you didn't see it coming at all. There were no red flags. This person they were very good at hiding it, um, disguising things. And then it was just like at, at the drop of a hat, you know, this tower came crashing down and then everything was re revealed. Sometimes that does happen. And of course we can feel very victimized when it happens. Other times there were red flags. We just decided not to pay attention to them. And I can actually speak kind of both sides of the coin here. There was shit that I didn't even see coming. And then there were other times where I knew damn well who I was getting involved with, but I was like, that doesn't apply to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So sometimes we do that. Um, let's go into my lurking in the shadows tarot. Since we're kind of like, it looks like we're dealing with this like scary wolf in this situation. So let's see what else. Let's see what else uh, is going to come through with us dipping our our toes into the past. Oh my gosh. <laughs> five of Cups is the Five of Souls in this deck. Affliction. Of course, Five of Cups is be major bummer, man. Major disappointment here. I mean, very melancholy. A lot of you guys could have been very, very depressed. It could have been very difficult for you to let this person go. Like you could have held on to this for a very long time because the five of cups does depict, not in this card, but it depicts usually a man who's kind of looking at the cups that have spilled over, but kind of failing to recognize that are, there still are good things in the world. So I feel like don't let this poisonous person, whoever they were, ruin you for all future encounters. You've already given this individual a lot of your power. And I feel like spirit's trying to say to you, don't give them any more. Okay. We have Countess of Fangs, the Watcher. 
Maybe some of you guys have watched this person on social media. This is the Page of Swords. Page of Swords can sometimes be the, you know, snooping on social media card. It could have been you. Maybe it was even this person kind of, you know, maybe even just meeting each other online. You could have been duped by somebody that pretended to be someone on the phone or just online, and it turned out that they weren't that person, okay? Um, kind of like watch out, you know, watch out for the red flags. So I just feel like there's some of you guys that probably knew ahead of time, or you felt a little tinge, a little ping of pain where you're just like, Ooh, I didn't really like that. But you may have just kind of continued to dip your feet into these waters just to kind of see what would happen. And then you just continued to be burned after, you know, time and time again. Uh, some of you guys could have really even become somewhat obsessed watching this person from afar and watching someone on social media as enticing as it can sometimes be. Um, it's one of those things where it's almost like a drug. Uh, you have to be very disciplined never to do it, never to look at someone's social media because you know that it's going to put you into this uh, affliction. You know it's going to be painful with whatever you're seeing or whatever you're watching. So I highly, uh, I just don't recommend it at all. I don't know anybody who watches someone's social media and is a happy person. I just don't, I've never met somebody that does that. That's happy. So let's see, we've got judgment reawakening. Okay. So what is judgment? Judgment, judgment is it's like the end. Okay. So we're at the end of the road. All we can do is go forward at this point. Judgment is also about making a judgment call. Are we going to learn from this past mistake? Are we going to learn from these past behaviors? Are we going to learn from this situation? Are we going to kind of reawaken or kind of uh, reincarnate and do this all over again. I'm getting here that you guys don't want to deal with this, the karma of this person or situation ever again. So really learn from it. That way you do not have to come back together with the soul in another life. And the longer that you might hang on to this, the longer that you might be afflicted by this person and not take your power back. It may be that, you know, there is some sort of future recreation here. And I just feel like most of you probably don't want that. You don't want to recreate this situation situation um, in the future, or maybe even attract this person back into your life because you know that they're toxic. All right, let's see what else. We, okay. I love this. Six of embers. This is the six of wands conqueror. Like <laughs> you can conquer this situation. You can take back your power. You can experience victory here. And maybe some of you guys already have. So this could all be past tense crap where you have reawakened. Your eyes are open. You no longer can be duped by this person. You know what it was and you're willing now to learn the lessons, cut your ties and move on. So that's amazing that you guys have been able to do this. If that's your story. Okay. And if you haven't done that yet, you will be able to do this. I love this. The six of things is the six of swords. You guys are in transit to get to the other side of the situation. So literally you are on this journey to make it to the other side, to calmer waters. Okay. To experience tranquility, to experience the calm after the storm. So if this hasn't happened to you yet, this is on the horizon to come in soon. So, you know, we can, we can dip our toes back in the past. We can reflect, we can look at the situation. We can learn from our mistakes. We can learn from, you know, whatever is happening or not happening with a person. But if you feel downright toxic, you feel like you're losing yourself. You feel like you just have nothing but, you know, spewing hate and rage for this person, especially if they really, really screwed you over and mistreated you, um, you know, that that's kind of like your, your soul's indication that it's time to get to the, the bottom of, you know, why that, why you're feeling that pain and what you can do about it on your own, rather than looking for this person to make it all better. Because unfortunately it's a nice thought that somebody else makes it all better, but it usually doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So this right here is the past memory lane. If that didn't resonate with you, um, please don't take it, but uh, let's go ahead and move forward. Let's see. The next one is classroom. What lessons can you take from all of those experiences? So what can you take from the experience with this person? Let's look at this energy. So we're going to go into my cosmic contracts, the ties that bind deck. 
So let's see what you can learn from this situation, this person. Maybe what did you already learn? You know, my chair is not a scratching post, Moon. This chair is just, it's a goner. It's a goner. Okay, I love this. This individual really taught you a very valuable lesson, but it could also be that you are teaching this person a very valuable lesson. Maybe you're the first person that isn't going to take their shit. Maybe you're the first person that's never going to look back on this person and go chasing them again like maybe other people did or will. You know, you're going to change that all around. Regardless, though, this is going to be a very valuable lesson, one that you're going to put to your mental mind, your, your mental notes, and say, you you know what? Not going to do that again. Definitely not going to relive that shit again. All right. What else? Mm, look at that. I will make you want to give up. So this teacher, this feels like somebody who was trying to sabotage you, sabotage your happiness, literally kick the ladder up, you know, from, from beneath you, um, you know, cause you to fall. So some of you really feel like this individual really did you dirty, did you wrong with whatever behavior or whatever happened here between the two of you. And it might've been that you wanted to get revenge on this person. Totally natural feeling. You're not a bad person if you felt that. It's just that you get to a point where you realize that that is just actually giving someone power. Rage is a very strong emotion, just like love is. To me, it's a very fine line. So if you're hating on somebody, you might as well just be loving on them. The only thing is, is that the rage and the hate is going to make you sick. It's going to make you feel worse in the end. And it doesn't mean, oh, switch to love, but just switch to loving yourself instead, right? Instead of continuously throwing it this person's way. Take that rage, take that pain, transform it or transmute it into something where you can make it matter. You know, take your rage out on in a very productive, healthy way, such as working out or working on a project, things like that. So there's different ways to work with these emotions. Emotions. Don't pretend you don't have them, feel them, but transmute them in a different way. We have divine love. It says, I will love you until the end of time. And I feel like some of you guys probably feel like this person was your person. Look, I'm not trying to say that this individual is not your person. Everybody is on their own individual journey. I don't believe that there is another human being on this planet that can tell you, this is your twin flame. This is your karmic partner. This is this person. Don't believe in it. Never, never believed in it. Um, that's just me though. I feel like at the end of the day, whoever you feel this person is, that might be how you feel about them now. Maybe it will change. Maybe this person could lead you to your true divine love partner. Be open on your journey. Try not to select certain people or slap labels on people because leave yourself always. Leave room for change. Leave tra uh, room for transformation on your journey. Because every individual, every teacher, every experience is going to push you to exactly where you need to be. Okay? So I think that that's beautiful. All right, let's get one last one. I'm your biggest fan cheerleader. And I, to me, this is about becoming your biggest fan. It's very easy to worship other people. It is. It's very easy to worship gurus. It's very easy to put other people on pedestals, um, look at them as, you know, they, they have all the answers, things like that. And I think that, you know, sometimes we can be very disappointed when that person kind of just ends up either disappointing us or the fact that they're just human. We got to become our own cheerleaders. We got to become our own support system. It is nice, of course, to have that. But if you aren't really getting that in a connection, you can't make that happen. You can't make someone love you. You can't make somebody be there for you. They either are going to be that person for you or they're not. So don't continue to do a bunch of stuff for someone that's doing nothing for you at all or constantly be that person that's lifting that individual up, but yet you're not really feeling good inside yourself. So it's kind of like showing up to the party with a full cup instead of an empty one, right? So I feel like this is something that you guys learned here. You're learning that, you know, giving all of your energy away to a person and maybe 
perhaps putting a label on that connection and saying, well, this is this person. So I'm, I am going to do this. I'm going to let this individual hurt me. I'm going to, cause I, there's a lesson here somewhere. I feel like there's a huge lesson in knowing when to stay and knowing when to go fuck the label. It's like, get rid of the label already because judge it on how someone is treating you and how you're showing up for yourself. And if those things are off balance and things don't make sense, that means you got to come back to center with yourself and really work on the connection, you know, within first. So, um, that seems to be some sort of a lesson there. We're going to go into my divine feminine healing deck now and see what else is coming through for some lessons. Mm -hmm. I love this match. What I want is also seeking me and is that energetic frequency that will draw these two points together. Absolutely. You're either going to be a match with someone or you're not. Sometimes you might be a match with someone later on, right? Somebody might just be off or they're just not ready. That doesn't mean that we put our lives on hold or that we chase people until they're ready. So this is about knowing when to stay and knowing when to go, knowing when someone's a match and knowing when they're not. There are a lot of times in my life where I knew that somebody was not right for me, but yet I just, my ego could not accept it. So I really pushed to try to make them my match when they were never my match. So Sometimes we have to learn, you know, through trial and error. We have rigid. I really like this because this is exactly what I just said earlier. Who you think your person is right now, be open-minded. Don't be rigid in that thinking. Let go of your need to label people because who you think someone is today might not be who they actually are tomorrow. It says, I remain open-minded as I mature on my journey. Who I was yesterday may not be who I am tomorrow. So always leave room on this journey for growth and ascension and change. If we're rigid and we're, you know, gonna, we're sticking to our guns with this one, this abusive asshole who has never been there for us, that's constantly lying and cheating on us and using us. But you know what? I was told once upon a time, that's my twin flame and I'm rigid and I'm sticking to it. Just ask yourself, how do you feel? How is this either, you know, label or reality? How is it working out for you? So I think that sometimes we just have to be open. And I'm just using those as examples of things I've heard in the past and people that I've seen absolutely ruin their lives over, you know, this rigid thinking. I've literally witnessed it. And it's pretty awful to see, especially when you care about people, um, but yeah, sometimes these concepts can ruin people's lives. And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with a label. It's just how we are, how we are connecting to that label or attaching ourselves to that label. Relationships are not bad. It's just that how we can, how we're attaching ourselves to relationships that can become toxic, that can become bad. You know, drinking isn't necessarily bad, but if you abuse it, it can become a bad thing. So it's, it's not really the thing. It's not the label. It's not the person. It's not the thing. It's us and how we are connecting to it and interacting with it and, you know, attaching ourselves to certain ideas. So headspace. I have the ability to change my mood by the thoughts I am choosing to think. I focus on things that bring me joy, not on the things that rob me of my peace. And I really like this because we always have a choice. We do. And I know that's difficult. It's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. I'm not going to lie, but it's about practicing. It's about being disciplined, waking up every day and choosing, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to have a good day. I'm going to try my best to focus on things that make me feel good. I'm not going to lie to myself and gaslight myself, but I am going to choose to focus on maybe the things that bring me joy or the things that I am grateful for or how good I really do have it instead of focusing on the things I don't have. That right there is, you know, we're choosing to have that headspace and that will really help to uh, brighten our vibration. 
So remember, you guys, these are all lessons. It's very easy to get into a negative headspace. It's really easy to pine after people that don't want us or that are not ready for us. It is sometimes difficult to keep moving forward and just focusing on ourselves. Sometimes it can be very boring depending on where you're at in your healing. So um, no one said it was easy. Last one we have unaware. I do not pretend to be blinded to the things I know deep down are not good for me. And sometimes it is easier. Ignorance is bliss. It absolutely is. It's such a true statement. But once you're aware, okay, kind of like, um, what's his name? Not Nemo. <laughs> I'm thinking of the Matrix. I don't know why I can't think of his name. You guys know who I'm talking. Neo, is that what his name is? Um, Anyways, once he takes the pill, I mean, he can't unsee it. He can't gaslight himself. I mean, I guess you could, but deep down inside, you pretty much know, you know, and that makes living a lot more difficult. It's harder to live a lie. So we can pretend to be unaware all day long, but once you're aware, I feel like it's spirit's way of helping you to see what needs to change, what areas of your life need improvement, things like that. All right, we're going to go into this deck right here, which is from Celestial Forecast by Carrie called Real Talk with Her Words of Wisdom. What else? What other lessons can we take from all of these experiences? Some of you guys might be like, enough of this already. I just want to know who's coming in next. <laughs> if the work is not done, the shadows will remain. It's so true, you guys. It's very easy to just try to skip all the hard shit. It really is. I'm a person that hates the gym. So I'm just like, if I'm not seeing immediate results right after my first time back at the gym, you know, after five years, I'm over it. You know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so sometimes our mindset, you know, um, with how realistic goals are and, and how long it does take to uh, implement change and, and to live by new principles and, and things like that and adapt healthy habits. It, it can be work, but it does need to be done. So you know, try not to rush the healing process. Whatever time you need to take, take that time because you're only going to think, thank yourself later. Silence speaks a thousand words. And I absolutely agree. You do not always owe somebody a final conversation. Sometimes people are so toxic and so manipulative. It's not safe for you to have a conversation with them. So silence does speak a thousand words. Sometimes not responding to someone says everything. And sometimes that goes for us too. If you are reaching out to someone and they are not responding, especially if you do it, let's just say two or three times in a row and there's just nothing on their end, we do have to listen to that. That is saying something. You can't move forward if you're still looking behind you. Leave the past in the past. Your future love is waiting. You know, the past is designed for us to learn from. Absolutely. I do look a lot into my past for wisdom, for healing, and answers about myself and how far I've come. But we never want to get stuck or hung up on the past to where we're not able to live our lives in the present moment, you know? So I always encourage people, even when we dip into past connections, to continue to live your life to the fullest in the present moment. Whatever is meant for you will catch back up with you. Okay. But it's usually not going to be when we're waiting around for it. So it says your future love is waiting for you. So make sure that you're living in the present, not continuously hanging on to the past. And sometimes hanging on to the past could be just like our own frustration with ourselves. Oh God, I wish that I could have been different. I wish I could have had a different outcome. I wish that I wouldn't have said this or done this or that, like really berating ourselves. Sometimes Sometimes that can keep us stuck too. Last one. You can hope, wish, and pray all you want, but you can only manifest what is truly meant to be yours. And that's very true. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand the law of attraction just because you have a, a vision board. And especially when it comes to a specific person, you know, I'm not saying you can't interfere with someone's free will. You technically could, but why would you want to? 
It's not, it's usually not going to be a good energy when you try to do that. So I'm talking about, let's just say through some sort of a spell or something like that. You're trying to compel someone to be interested in you, et cetera. It's usually not really going to work out in the way you think. It's always better to allow things to just naturally unfold. And you can do different spell work and rituals and things to maybe um, vamp up your own em energy, you know, um, to be more confident and things like that. But wh whoever's meant to be attracted to you is your true match, not because you're trying to bend the will of someone else. So we can hope, we can pray, we can do vision boards, we can do affirmations, we can do all this stuff to try to get a specific person. But guess what? You can only really truly manifest what is meant to be yours. So if you're wasting your time with thoughts that you can compel someone to change or want you, spirit saying, try not to give your power to that. Really try to give that power back to yourself and empower yourself instead. So, all right, guys, I'm done being a, being a, um, <laughs> a dictator here of what, you know, what lessons need to be learned. So now we're going to go into what is your current love frequency. So, you know, sometimes our frequency determines what we might be attracting next. So let's look at this. We're going to go into the spirit code Oracle also by aqua moonlight tarot. All right, let's see. And some people will ask what happened to aqua moonlight. She's still around. She's just, I don't think, no longer focusing or uh, no longer um, posting on her original Aqua Moonlight channel on YouTube. She's now Venetian Light Tarot on YouTube. So definitely check her out over there. Her and I have been exchanging a few decks lately, and I'm actually about ready to get a couple of her... Um, Christmas decks and I think another one. So um, her and I are very much in touch. And uh, it's funny because out of just a lot of readers, there are a few that I resonate with and she's one of them. Uh, her style of reading is very similar to mine. So yeah. Anyways, let's see what else. All right. What's your attraction factor? What is your freak, your love frequency? What's your love frequency? Oh my gosh. Interesting. We have the book of spells. I was just talking about that. But this is saying white spells. So what is it? It doesn't mean that um, like a love spell is black magic. Sometimes a love spell can be kind of like a banishing spell. It depends on how you use it. It depends on what your focus is. If you're wanting to banish or, or wish someone harm, or you could do a ritual, which is whatever energy is being sent to you, you send it back, you, you place it back to the sender. Sender. So we're not really wishing anyone ill, but if somebody's putting, trying to put something on you, you're just sending that energy back. But this is the same thing with like a love spell. It's kind of like whatever, whatever love is meant to be yours, you know, let it come in now, not connecting it to a specific person. So that would be more of a white love spell. So I feel like this is interesting. It says you're manifesting something, you're learning new things, you're using spells to manifest the things that you want to bring into your life, not specific people. That would be a black magic spell. So let's go ahead and continue. So I feel like you guys are very vibrationally able to attract whatever you would like into your sphere, um, just in general. So if you're looking for new love, you're looking for a healthier connection. This is possible. And we have anchor. So this is saying be open to movement right? Stuck in one spot. We need to take the anchor out wherever we're at. Are we willing to change? Are we willing to change our minds? Are we willing to be open, right? So we have to ask ourselves that. Are we willing to open up our minds? Are we still stuck somewhere? And we have the magnifying glass. So the magnifying glass, of course, it means a few things, but what I'm picking up on immediately is it's talking about really taking a deep look at ourselves. Are we wasting a lot of time? Are we stuck spying on someone? This is coming up again. Now, not everybody is doing that. So I'm not trying to call you out if you're, you know, you're not doing that, but this is the biggest waster of energy, spying on people on social media, old friends, old flames, old lovers, just forget 
just stop because all it's doing is it's just siphoning your energy. It's disempowering you in the moment. So really, really try to stop doing that if that is um, something here. So your vibe, it's like, I want to attract someone new in, but yet we're still kind of anchored in the past. So spirit, I feel, is calling us out a little bit and saying, if you want someone new, you're going to have to let whatever that is, your preoccupation with someone from your past go. And not everybody, that's not your story, so don't take it. Okay, this is my treasure trove oracle. We have the parent. Okay, so this is talking about people such as family members, right? Have something to teach you. This could be a connection with a parent. This could be a positive or a negative connection with a parent, okay? So there is some sort of, um, this is going to help to guide you to the next stage in your life. So if you have unhealed wounds with a parent or parental figure in your life, you are being asked to address whatever this is. So that way you can release or forgive some sort of a wound from your past, okay? This is about staying mindful. Just because we were raised a certain way doesn't mean that we have to have that exact connection or that exact relationship. Sometimes people are like, oh, I just blame everything on my parents. I'm, I'm fucked up because of my parents. Or, you know, I guess I'm just attracted to somebody that's like one of my parents, even though that's not good for me, but that's just what I'm naturally attracted to. Kind of take that magnifying glass and look at, is that really what you're looking for? Is that really what's going to make you happy? Is that really what you want? Okay. So the current love vibe, it might also be that we're looking to be loved in a way where we were not, that where we did not receive that love from our parents. And so we're, we're needing to make sure that we're not going into a connection, looking to be saved or looking to be healed, that we're able to provide our own, um, like nurture our own inner child rather than looking to another person to do it. Okay. So you could attract someone that you need to take care of or that you're looking to save you. You don't want to do that. The spirit saying we got a clear wound and we have the psychologist. I, maybe some of you guys are working through this right now. I have no idea. Maybe you guys are talking to someone. It doesn't actually have to be like a, you know, a psychologist. It could be somebody that you're working with right now. But the psychologist is basically saying here that we need some sort of advice and it needs to be unbiased. It says, look no further. The psychologist is here to help you reflect on yourself, address any mental health issues. So I'm not trying to say like, you know, you guys, um, somebody has like a, a mental health issue. I mean, we're all freaking mental to a point, right? But this is basically saying not allowing our mental state to run the next connection to, to run, run the show and what we're attracting. Our vibration could literally bring in someone that's unstable, that we're going to have to learn a lesson through this person again. And I feel like you guys are just done with that. So uh, definitely take that time that you need in order to do some work. And maybe some of you already have. Yeah, we have the babysitter. Interesting. The parent and the babysitter. Do you really want to babysit another child, right? Do you really want to do all the work and have to parent someone? I feel like this is an opportunity for you to reparent yourself, actually. Provide yourself with the parenting that maybe you guys did not get or some sort of a wound that needs to be nurtured. The babysitter is here to take some of the brunt off your day-to-day -day living, recuperate and take the time you need to relax. So yeah, we need to um, nurture our inner child. We need to learn to reparent ourselves. There's some really great YouTubers out there that have all kinds of information on inner child work, inner child healing, definitely look them up because, um, you know, even if you guys cannot afford to work with a psychologist, which a lot of, a lot of people can't, um, then it is about maybe taking some steps to be more mindful of why you have chose certain partners in the past and what you don't want to choose again. Okay. Cause I feel like you guys don't want to attract another person that you have to take care of, or that's a child that you have to like do all the work. And then somehow when they're, they've graduated, then they're off onto other experiences while you're left in the dust. If that is a common theme for you. And it could be codependency as well. Codependency can sometimes be, you know, something that causes us to want to caretake. 
really take care of other people because it fulfills some sort of a emptiness within ourselves. And so I feel like there could be someone that could help kind of undo some of that stuff, that like old programming to reprogram here. Yeah, I like this. This is new cycle. So I kind of feel like for some of you, maybe this is not going on. Maybe this is, you've already done this work. So this is confirming for me, Wheel of Fortune, especially Sagittarius season, which is right now, is the time for you. You can turn a new cycle here. You can, this is the turning point. You can create a new cycle for yourself. You are on a roll. Some of you guys are doing really well right now. So don't let what's come up here deter you. I'm just getting here that you guys can change the situation if you have not already. Uh, luck is on your side. Maybe the wheel of fortune has been kind of like not in your favor for a while, but things are about ready to start looking up again. This is incredible. Yeah. Awesome. Aries energy. Fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, fire sign, emperor coming through, plan of action. You're taking some sort of authority in the situation. You're taking responsibility for stuff. You know, you're taking personal inventory. You're taking your power back. You're sitting on your throne and you're basically telling life, this is the way it's going to be. You're conducting the next move. I love that. Yep. You're making a judgment call to basically make peace with the past. You're choosing to learn from the past and you realize that your choice to do so is going to create the next phase in your life. So that you're either going to stay stuck or you're going to lay down the gavel, lay down the law and say enough is enough. And you are going to give yourself another chance to rebirth and have an entirely new life moving forward. This is fantastic. Oh, I love this. Look at you, the chariot. This is very similar to the six of wands that just came through. You can do it. You can, you can succeed. You can finish maybe what you started here. You can go for this and, and make it through the finish line. So you absolutely can do this. So, you know, we dot, we, we took a little trip down uh, memory lane. We took our toes. We dipped them into the past. It was a little hard and, and shadowy and everything like that. But what I'm seeing here is that you guys can shift this energy for the better. Luckier times are ahead for you. You can, you do have the power to change your life and you do have the power to attract someone new that will be better suited for you perhaps. So that's positive. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at to-do list. So what activities or things would be helpful when it comes to getting back out there and finding the right partner for you? Let's look. So we're going to go into my shift your vibes deck and see what things we can do in order to shift up this energy to create a more attraction factor. Oh, I love this mirror work. Complimenting yourself, loving yourself, looking in the mirror, speaking to yourself. Be so some, a lot of times we want someone to say something to us. We want someone to compliment us. There's nothing wrong with that. But when's the last time you actually looked in the mirror and told yourself that you love yourself or that you look really good? So start there and maybe in the, in the mornings, like every single morning, um, look in the mirror and say something to yourself until it feels real. At first, it probably won't feel good or you'll feel very uncomfortable or even silly. <laughs> um, but after a while, it will become a routine for you. And um, this will start to be mirrored in your life from other people. So start there. Whoa. Oh, we have dancing. Hey, move your body. Now it might not involve dancing. Maybe some of you guys don't want to dance or you don't like to dance or don't know how to dance. Some of you guys could learn how to dance or just you like to go to either a club or you like to go to a place where they have line dancing, maybe ballroom dancing, swing dancing, something like that. Um, it could even just be move your body as in get back into the gym, go for a hike, ride a bike, whatever it is, move your body. When you're moving your body, what's happening. Endorphins are basically rising to the surface and we're feeling really good. We're also healthier. We're in shape. We're stronger. And that just makes you a more well-rounded, happier person. And also, if you guys are looking to meet new people, you'll have to put yourself out there. 
Maybe join some sort of a, uh, like a club that gets together to, and does fun things. And we also have breakfast in bed, chilling out. Make sure that you take time for yourself. You know, maybe sleep in on the weekends if you can. Uh, maybe just hang out in bed, have breakfast in bed. Maybe, you know, snuggle up with a nice blanket and a book. Chill out. Make sure that you're taking time for calm energy too. And we have watched the sunset beauty. So make sure that you're out in nature and you're taking time to just see the beauty of the world. So I definitely feel like it's a nice, equal, um, balanced energy of, you know, working with yourself, spending time with yourself, chilling out indoors, you know, having peace within your own environment, but also getting out into the world, seeing the world, meeting new people and just, you know, living your life. So I feel like if there is a group of people that get together, you know, it might be good for you guys to figure out what that group is and try to join. And if it's not a group, it might just be with a friend or it could just be alone, whatever, whatever, uh, floats your boat, right? All right, let's see what else. This is the spiritual gifts Oracle. Oh, we have fire. Fantastic. It says with a strong connection to fire, you can cause great healing or great destruction. Fire magic suits you best. You are the spark of it all. Ooh. So what's interesting to me is that we just got Sagittarius and Aries. Fire sign. That doesn't mean that you have to be a fire sign if you're watching this video, but this may mean that you've got a lot of fire. Um, I'm a fire. I'm actually like freaking triple fire. I've got... Um, what is it? My, my, uh, oh gosh, why can't I think my, my Mercury, I think, which is like mentally, like how I think is in, um, Sagittarius. My sun sign is Sagittarius. My rising sign is Sagittarius. Like I'm really fiery all the way, but I can become like very passionate, very inspired, very creative, but I can also become very rageful and angry, which can become destructive. So it's just all in the way that you're using your fire energy is what spirit's saying. You can use your fire to be attractive, to get things done, to motivate yourself and other people, or you can use it to burn people and to keep people at arm's distance from you because they don't want to get burned because they're afraid, they're intimidated. So what spirit is saying is learn how to use your fire in a very empowering way for yourself because it can be positive or negative. It's just the way that you use it. Self-love. Yep. We already know this. You advocate a healthy lifestyle, taking good care of your body, mind, and spirit, and teaching others to give love back to themselves. So this, this is about leading by example, maybe even being an influencer for other people because you love yourself so well. Other people are inspired, kind of like, wow, you have something that I just don't not quite know what it is, but I want it for myself. So take that time for loving the self. We have resilience so this is about you've gone through some shit, but guess what? You've bounced back. You're a wounded warrior, but you're stronger because of it. You don't give up despite the obstacles ahead. You know how to take care of yourself and find peace in the storms of life. Absolutely. So, you know, don't let this, whatever happened here in your past, ruin you for all future encounters. Bounce back and st don't let anybody steal your fire. And we have storyteller. Ooh, this is about you having a story to tell. You know, I have so many, so many stories of my own and some I do keep for my, myself because, you know, sometimes stories, they're too personal and you don't want to, you know, share that with the world. Uh, but your stories and your experiences really have made you the person that you are today. And so I feel like what's going on here is that it makes for a great story. All the shit you went through makes for a great freaking survival story, doesn't it? <laughs> so everything that you've gone through, you've gone through for a reason. I'm getting like a fiery energy. Own it, right? Own it. Don't go down in flames. Be like that phoenix that rises through the ashes. That's who you really are. That's who you really are. 
So learn to own your power. And if other people are intimidated by you and you feel like that's why you can't find the right partner, I'm going to tell you right now, those people are not strong enough to be in your presence. People that are afraid or intimidated by your truth and your power Sorry, they're all wrong for you anyways. Next, you're going to continue to move forward independently. You will attract the right partner to you eventually. So if there's somebody that can't, they're intimidated, uh, you shine too bright for them, they can't handle it, fuck them. You don't need them anyways. So learn to own it. Learn to own your power. And other people that try to stamp it out, Get the hell away. All right, this is my connections of the modern world tarot. Mmm, magicians on fire. The magician also uses the element of fire in order to create or burn. You can use it both ways. You can use it either way at any time that you want. There are some things that you're going to need to burn and get rid of, and then there are other things that you're going to want to create and, um, you know, motivate yourself. So learn to use this fiery energy like a magician, make it work for you. You're the magician, you're the creator of your life. You know, you decide whether or not you're going to hang out in a situation or you're just going to see it from a different perspective and move on. So I feel like you guys have the opportunity here to start seeing things from a whole new perspective. That perspective is, you know, kind of like looking at the silver lining. Had I not gone through that, then I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Or had that person stayed in my life, I wouldn't have met this next person. So it's just all in the way that you look at things that will be very empowering. Yeah, the Ace of Swords being very clear. And it's also utilizing your logic. There's nothing wrong with logic. I think in the spiritual community, there's too much reliance on love and light and, you know, just positivity. And that's just not realistic. It's not. Life can sometimes be challenging. Life can sometimes be hard. Sometimes there are mental illnesses or even a great thing called hormones. If you're, you know, feminine or whatever. So yeah, hormones are a bitch, especially when you get older and you start going through freaking menopause. I mean, yeah, sometimes you can't really control what's happening. <laughs> so it's real easy to say love and light and stay positive. But sometimes that can be very difficult. But that's why we've got that mindfulness, realizing that if you're taking time to chill out, you're taking time to take care of yourself, you know, all these things and the haywires of the world, it's always going to be there. Um, but it's, it's, it's about, you know, letting it get out of control, which is what is going to overtake you or not. So I feel like self-care is very important here. Last one, King of Swords. Yeah, this is a boss energy. King of Swords is very logical. King of Swords is not afraid to speak their truth. They're very authentic. Um, they have a lot of integrity. And to me, this is about you and you attracting this person of integrity, this like-minded individual, this, this, you can manifest this king, king of swords is what I'm getting here. And that king of swords is a truth teller. That king of swords is opposite actually of the person that you were involved with before that came up, who was a liar and a, um, uh, a con artist. So yeah. Anyways, so that right there is your to-do list. Be more like the king of swords to attract the king of swords, right? This is also about change your story. If you don't like the story that you're living in right now, change it. You have the power to manifest this change and turn everything around. Absolutely. You've gone through everything that you've gone through for a reason, you guys. Make sure to take care of yourself. Make sure to take time to just really um, live, live, live in the moment because that is really going to make all the difference in your life. All right. Wow. We're an hour in and we haven't even got into the topic, which is who are you attracting in next? I really didn't plan for it to go that way, but Hey, sometimes we just, uh, we just have to roll with it. So now we're going to go into new love. What kind of a person are you most likely to attract next? This deck right here is called who are they by rising sun Oracle. Who is this new person that you will most likely be attracting in next?
you know what? I am going to use these decks for this one. And then the forecast, I think I'm going to use in that one. This is my diviner's oracle. Okay. So what kind of a person are you most likely to attract in next? This could be a person that you are uh, traveling and you meet this person while you're traveling. You meet this person on vacation or this person travels to you. They're from like out of town and you meet them while they're in town. This could also be somebody where you just, you meet them maybe even online and you travel to go see them or they travel to go see you. Now it doesn't even have to involve travel. It just might mean that it's a new adventure for you, right? You hop on the ship, you're all in and you just go for it. Ooh, we have the star, what you wished for. Okay, what you've been hoping for. This is also guidance. You're spiritually guided to this person. The stars align, it's just right, and you collide right when the moment when the moment's right. Oh, and we have the yen energy of the of the woman, feminine you. This could be you, the person watching this video. You are literally what you're hoping for. You're bringing in like your ships have come in. Very cool. I love that. So your ships come in with this one. So that does tell me that this individual um, has a lot to offer. There is something here where it fulfills some sort of maybe a dream or, or a wish. All right. This is the Intuit Angel Oracle. Oh, we have Angel of Music. There could be somebody who's musically inclined. You could meet this individual when, um, you know, you're watching some sort of like a band or a concert or something like that. They could play a musical instrument, like I said, be creatively inclined, but this is the fifth chakra. So this is the throat chakra, a lot of great communication. So this person is going to be a really good communicator. That King of Swords is coming to my mind. The King of Swords is very honest, very truthful, very communicative. So yeah, and it does say creative expression. So they could also be a very creative individual, but they communicate clearly with you. They don't play games. They don't um, hide things from you. They're not deceptive. So that's a positive right off the bat, right? We have Azrael. So Archangel Azrael is the um, angel of death. So when you have finally crossed over, uh-huh, yeah, this is when this person comes in, when you lay that old whatever it is to rest. And I'm also getting that there is someone on the other side that is guiding you to this person. Oh my freaking God. So if you guys have a guardian angel, you know, somebody that passed away in this lifetime that you knew and you know, they're on the other side helping you out, I'm telling you, you're going to get some sort of a sign or some sort of guidance from this individual on the other side, helping you to meet this person. That is really cool. All right. What else? Oh, this, I love this wolf here. It says, Aniel, star of love and beauty. So it says creativity again, and it also talks about psychic abilities and a developing romance. So this is someone with Venus energy, okay? Like you guys are going to have the same interests, the same taste in music, the things that you guys both love and find beautiful. You guys will both connect here. You guys will like to maybe watch sunsets together. You guys will like the same music. You guys will like to do the same things such as hiking or going and being out in nature. So this is most likely going to be your experiences with this person. There's going to be a very love and like Venus energy all the way. You guys have the same taste. You guys have value the same things. You guys have the both, both maybe a similar upbringing. You guys connect on that level. Um, there's a similarity there is what I'm getting here. And it might also be that you just love and adore each other. You find each other very physically attractive, but you're also attracted to each other's hearts here. Okay. So this is my arrows of love tarot. Let's see what else. So a very loving, kind person, a very truthful person. And we have everlasting. So that kind of reminds me of marriage till death do us part. This could be somebody that you guys end up actually marrying. Okay. So we have the nine of flames. So to me, this is very interesting. Remember I said, you guys are the wounded warrior. 
that's all going to make sense. All the shit, all the trials and tribulations that you guys went through to get to this person, it's going to make sense. And you're glad that you survived this. You really are because it's led you to this person. And I'm also getting that maybe this individual has survived a lot of stuff. Maybe they survived some sort of cancer or they are a survivor of something. Cancer comes to my mind. That doesn't mean that they've had to have cancer. It could also be that they've really just survived a lot of hardships. Maybe they've lost a lot in their life. And so you guys may have that in common too. We also have the pie priestess. You are going to trust your vibes. Remember the psychic ability. It may be that you feel like you're psychically connected. Like you can just read each other's mind or you just kind of know, like you have this feeling that you've known this person before, or I've known this person my entire life. You're finishing each other's sentences. You're just like, whoa, you know, they could also be a very intuitive individual too. Like they're just very in tune with your heart is what I'm getting here. Like they know that you've been hurt and they don't want to hurt you. They don't want to, um, they don't want you to uh, worry about them. They're not there to hurt you. Yep. <laughs> and this person understands if you want to take things slow. They understand if you're guarded. They're, under they're understanding if you don't trust them immediately. Okay. Because they know that you've gone through some things and they respect it. So this individual is not going to push you. This individual is not going to try to rush you. This individual is going to take their time with you because they're not taking it personally. They're not taking that whatever you went through in your history, that it has anything to do with them. So I feel like maybe you and this person could just really get to know each other for a while through conversation and not rush into this. I feel like if anything, you probably did that with this last person and it didn't work out well. So you're going to really take your time to get to know this person and they're going to respect it, you guys. Wow. All right. So now let's go into some details of um, who they are. You know, who is this person? What are some details surrounding this love story as well? But let's go ahead and see who... Wow, I have so many cards that flew out, but they're all on the floor. I have calm and big smile that I can see. So they might have a really big smile and they might have a very calming energy about them. Oh, they're very romantic. And I got that Venus energy already here. They might romance the crap out of you. They might be very old fashioned. They might bring you flowers, take you dancing, um, you know, wine tasting, things like that. Things that are very romantic. They might do something really, really romantic around, you know, certain holidays and stuff. We have academics, so it could be that they went to school for something specific. They have either a degree or they have some sort of certificate to do something specific. They might be very intelligent and very smart. They might come from a family of um, very educated people as well. We also have somebody who is extremely confident, and that's awesome because that is very attractive. All right, what else? Oh, we have a hard worker. So that's great. All these things sound really amazing, right? This is someone who is not going to just say things to say them. They're going to say things that they mean. So if they don't mean them or they're not ready to say them, they're not going to. All right, this is my Twin Flame Journey Oracle Revised Edition. All right, love story with this person. Okay, so interesting. We have separation, uh, removed, severed, and scattered. Let's go ahead and get a clarifying card. This is my newest deck called the Twin Flame Journey Tarot Revised Edition. So I've got a matching deck now. All right, what is this energy? Ooh, interesting. So Hierophant, this right here is Taurus energy. The Taurus energy is very, well, it's very stable. It's very grounded. There's a lot of integrity and it's spiritual connection, spiritual advisement, somebody who is very serious. So I feel that if you're not ready for a serious commitment or a serious relationship, this might be your person is very confident in who they are. And if you're not ready I don't know that they're going to waste too much time in this connection. So let's just say you're still kind of involved with the ex. I'm not saying that you're going to do that, but if you were, I don't feel like this person's going to stick around for that. They're very understanding with wanting to get to know you and take things slow. But if you're not wanting what they're looking for, cause they, they, they have a lot of values. 
um, and that's why I said the Venus energy is connected to Taurus. They, they know what they're looking for. Um, they're looking for a serious commitment. They're looking for somebody that they can spiritually grow with. So this next individual that you're attracting into your life is ready to go the long haul. And if you're not ready, it could be that this is kind of what severs this connection. So are you sure that you're ready for this? It's kind of what I just got. Are you sure you're ready for this? So whatever hangups you might have still connect to your past. Ooh, <laughs> you know, again, we're not going to label anything, but this could be, this could be the, the counterpart. This could be the person. And it may be that something is reflected in you where you're just like, oh my gosh, like this is the real deal. Am I ready for this? I always prayed for it. I always thought I wanted it, but am I really ready for this? Can I handle it? Oh, okay. So we still have a little bit of the past that we're letting go here. We still have a little bit of the past that we're letting go here. So some something from the past is still, I don't want to say it's in the way, but it's still kind of lingering when you meet this person. So it's either going to make or break the connection. And I just feel like you guys are not going to want to lose this person because it's like Christ-like energy, Christ consciousness energy. It's um, very much like we're going to either move forward or we're going to end this. So this is a very serious person that's, I don't want to say they're pushing you because they're not, but they represent change and they represent real love. And you're going to have to decide whether or not that's what you're truly ready for. Yeah, they're very patient. They're very calm, but they're not going to waste their time. They're not going to waste your time or their time. So you, you, it, it will require you to be very um, mature and ready for this. Oh my God. Yeah. This person is light. This person brings light to your life. This person illuminates a lot. Says, do you want to grow? Do you want to change? Do you want to be happy? And if you've got all these hangups still, I don't know that this person um, will uh, will wait for that, you know? So this is telling me here that the kind of person that you're most likely to attract in next and the details surrounding your love story with them is you could go all the way with this person. You could have the relationship of your dreams. This could be everything that you've been looking for. But if you've got a lot of hangups right now and you bring that in and you don't work on those things and you bring some of this crap into this relationship, I feel like there's an op uh, there is a possibility that you, there could be a separation or things could be severed. Um, so I'm just showing you guys or telling you guys what I'm being shown here on these cards. Uh, that's it. So we're going to go ahead and go into the love guru portion which is what advice do your angels have for you regarding these matters, okay? And we're already like a, an hour and seven minutes in, so hopefully you're still with me. This is the Romance Angel cards. Let's see what the love gurus have to say for you in regards to everything here today. Okay, so there is something where we got to heal those family issues. Sorry, there's a glare not trying to put this out there if it's not resonating with you, but if you've got some sort of issues with parents and that did come up earlier, you know, we, we got it. We got to work on that. We got to face it. We can't continue to stuff it down and not face it. We got to face it, whatever it is. Your love life is going to benefit from this when you can heal this wound. We have that soulmate energy. So yeah, this person, I mean, of course, th these are labels, soulmate, twin flame. For, like I said, forget about the labels, you guys. We're just talking about someone that has your best interest at heart, you know, has your best interest at heart. So I know you guys are looking for that kind of love. So it's basically indicating here we've got to change it. And we got children, remember, inner child you know, childhood, family, something like that. It may be that you want to have children with somebody. This could be your person that you do end up getting married to and having children with, if that's what you want. So whatever needs to be healed, Spirit is saying, let's get this going. Let's roll with this. Let's, let's get it done. Okay, so this is called A Divine Transformation by Angelic Revelation 144. Safety and security. 
Since things may seem unsta unstable currently, it is wise to do root chakra work to help you balance your energies. So there's some root issues, feeling unsafe. The root chakra is our foundation. And there could be something faulty here with the foundation of uh, childhood. We're not, I'm not trying to take everything back to childhood, but a lot of our issues do stem, unfortunately, from our past. So um, it's not about getting stuck, but we do have to take a look at that and go, you know, what can I do now? How can I heal this? So doing some inner child or reparenting the self type of work will be really, really helpful. Maybe even um, working through the chakras and, and doing some sort of Reiki with a Reiki master or um, healer or something would be very helpful or just a counselor, psychologist, talk therapy too. Um... Oh yeah, let me just get two more cards from this deck. We have vacation. So a vacation by the ocean will help you to reset your energy. It's important to take time out, remember, in Mother Nature to connect with the divine and heal yourself. Yes. So if some of you guys have been putting off taking care of yourself, um, taking a vacation, I feel like you got it. You got to book it. You got to book that vacation or it could just be a staycation. You're, you're at home. You're taking that break. You're having breakfast in bed. Do whatever that is. Remember, go out and watch that sunset. Connect with nature. Very, very healing. And we have family. Interesting. Family. Again. Healing, merging, and blending of family should be a priority. Okay. So healing with this family. This could be blended families too. This does not have to be your blood family. It could be um, family members that you, like you see a friend as a family member or something. It could be that too. Um... It doesn't actually have to be your mother and your father. There could even be issues with children. Sometimes our children can be a reflection of all the things that we need to work on. And boy, am I speaking from experience. <laughs> I love my, my child, my only child. But let me tell you, that relationship has shown me more about myself, shit that I didn't want to look at more than any other relationship in my life. So yeah, sometimes our kids are great teachers. <laughs> Great teachers. This right here is the Sacred Self Oracle, also by Aqua Moonlight. All right, so let's get our final pieces of, of uh, guidance from our guides here. The universe has always, I'm sorry, the universe always has a way of guiding you and reflecting you back what you need to see or hear and notice the signs, the synchronicities and subtle communication that is trying to send you a message. Listen closely. So there is something that spirit is trying to tell you. You might not be listening. Maybe this reading, perhaps some of that tough love that came through earlier, maybe something clicked. I don't know. Maybe there's something that you're intuitively just, you know, it's an intuitive nudge. We are supposed to listen because spirit is trying to guide us at this time when it comes to our love lives and the healing that we need to do. We also have your light is precious and your soul is delicate. Be careful of sharing too much of your light with those that only want to take from you. Set up healthy boundaries and be aware. And this is so hard, especially if you're an empath like myself, you know, um, you're just a naturally giving person. You just, you, you, you think that everything or everyone is going to be on the same page, that everybody is going like that. You're not dealing with somebody that would absolutely just take from you and discard you or lie to you or deceive you or try to do something just horrible. I mean, it doesn't even compute because you're not that kind of person. And that's why we do have to be, I don't want to use the word guarded, but you do have to be discerning in this life because not everything is light. Unfortunately, there are some very dark individuals that are looking to really sabotage you and to you know, sorry to say, fuck you up in this life. And it's for their own selfish gain, or it's because they're just so miserable. They want to see other people suffer. Those people exist. So it's kind of like knowing when you run across someone like that and knowing that if you feel really drained or negative, or like you're going crazy in someone's presence, like you're always questioning your reality, you have to look at that situation and say, this might not be good for me. You know, this might not be good for me. So we have to be willing to listen to that inner voice that says you might have hit a brick wall. 
You might need to get out of this. You might need to remove yourself from this situation. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a less spiritual person. It just makes you a healthy person. And we have notice the whispers from spirit guides, angels. Oh my gosh. And passed on loved ones that surround you now. If you have called upon their guidance, they have heard you feel your comfort that their presence brings you. So you guys, this is a confirmation that there is someone on the other side that is helping you right now when it comes to your love life and also guiding you to this next person. Holy smokes. That is so cool. But your guides are showing up big time. Sometimes there's tough love involved with the things that, you know, we don't want to hear or things that trigger us, it's going to only benefit us in the long run. Spirit only wants the best for you. You absolutely deserve to be happy. Don't let anybody take that away from you. So you guys, I wish you all the best. Everything that I said here was just, you know, just try, try to take it, you know, with a grain of salt. I don't have all the answers. Um, just because I've gone through certain things doesn't mean my wisdom will apply in your situations. I'm just here as the, I guess, facilitator of the cards and the messages that come through. So like I said, just take it if it resonated and hopefully it resonated with someone out there and that it was helpful to you. Thanks guys for watching. You guys take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.